If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Welcome to the My Name is Human podcast. We are an Earth2.io podcast brought to you by Earth2news.com. My name is Human Hazy. And my name is Human Kangi. And we have a special guest today, Mitch Pym. How are you doing today, Mitch? Well, 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 boys. What can I say? Thank you for having me. Ha ha ha. No. You are lucky I have decided to do this pathetic joke of a podcast with you clowns. Oh, sorry. Well, I couldn't, right, I couldn't, I, I couldn't we, resist. We are ending this show right now because I don't like him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is what happens when you invite Mitch Pym to the podcast. You've got to expect these sorts of blows to your ego. All right, Mitch. How are you doing today? Thanks for joining the show. No, thanks for having me. I'm uh, I'm doing very well, thank you. How are you two doing? Good, good. So tell us a little bit about who Mitch Pym is, what you do in real life, and kind of your Earth 2 introduction. Okay. Um, so obviously Mitch Pym is my, my actual name. Um, my real job is electrical engineering. Uh, well, they class it as multi-skilled, um, mainly electrical engineering, um, but we do a bit of mechanical and other little things. Um, and I got involved in Earth 2 in late December. Um, and when I remember when I joined the Discord, there was maybe 2,000 members in there. I think there's 20,000 now or so. Um, and I remember joining and everyone was asking me, constantly asking me, how did I hear about Earth 2? How did I hear about it? Um, and they were expecting me to say TikTok. When in actual fact, I actually had a Facebook advert come, come up in, in ah, my feed. Nice. I, always... I think it was one of the first ones. <laughs> I love hearing from people that got into it through the Facebook advertisement because it because there hasn't been any other forms of advertising. It just lives on in perpetuity. Mm. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is fantastic. Same ad, the same advert is still running to this day. Yeah, I see it. I see it about once a week. So, I mean, hey, it worked. It got Mitch Pym into the mix. So, you know, you got a very good content creator out of that, Shane. That's that's good mileage on your <laughs> Facebook ad. Um, but you know, I do want to talk to you about some of your savage videos roasting other people. But before we go into that, you do have a little bit of experience with content creation before Earth 2, right? Yeah, absolutely. Can you absolutely. Uh, talk a little bit about your, your past successes? Uh, I mean, it's, it, it is quite a long story, so I will try and cut it down for you. <laughs> Take your To time. the best of my ability. Um, so back when I was an apprentice learning my trade, um, a couple of friends and, and, and myself decided that we were going to play. Um, I can't remember, it was one of the original Call of Duty's. I can't remember which one. Maybe Black Ops 1. Um, and we all decided to start YouTube at the same time. This would have been about 2013, 20, 2012. And we were all just pushing videos out. And it was an absolute drag because we were doing it daily. And by the time you come up with an idea, you, you film the idea, you edit uh, you get the thumbnails, you start promoting your own stuff. It takes, uh, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of effort. Um, so we were doing that for a couple of years and uh, it got to the point where we were, we were getting, we were blowing up. I've got, my, my YouTube account historically has got over 2 million views. Um, obviously, you, you, it's been pointed out many times that I have 11,000 11, subscribers and not many views because those 11,000 subscribers are back from 2013. So I ended up stopping doing YouTube um, to continue with my apprenticeship in my college, whereas my two friends continued with YouTube. And now they're both millionaires. Good, good life decision. Yeah. So 
I mean, it we're, is what it is. we're all just destroying each other's ego and confidence heading into the weekend here. We got to we got to pick each other up a little bit. But yeah, absolutely. But I mean, it is it, I know that it's a twist of the knife <laughs> that they're, you know, millionaires now, but it does have to be cool and give you some insight on, you know, what it takes to build, I guess, a successful you know, YouTube channel, because if Earth 2 takes off, you'll be one of the most well positioned you know, content creators yeah. as somebody that's in it so early. So, yeah, well, this is the thing. I, I, I've I've grown with them, and and 2013, like 11,000 subscribers was a lot. You know, like 11,000 subscribers these days is kind of like mm, nobody cares. But back then, that was a long time ago. That meant quite a lot. And I've seen them grow, and I've seen exactly how they've done it. Because even though I wasn't making the videos myself. I'd still jump into theirs because they just oh, they just messaged me saying, can you just jump into this game and we'll do this, we'll do that. Yeah, fine, because there's no stress for me because I'm not recording, I'm not editing and all this. So I'll jump in and I've seen them grow. I know how to do it. I've got, a, yeah, a lot of background knowledge. So hopefully I'm positioning myself um, quite well for well, the growth well, of Earth 2. Well, it, well, interesting. You say 11,000 is not that many, but it's... Four times more than Randy Chavez, and about eleven thousand times more than Earth Two Fake News. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, who? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, so kind of, kind of tell us about you. You kind of target some of the other content creators having a good time with them. Kind of tell us what yes. your inspiration was for that, and and kind of the ideals you get when you do those type of videos. Well, I'd like to preface this um, by saying that. Every single video I make on another content creator, before I even start th drafting it, thinking of ideas or, or anything, I always contact them privately in, d in direct messages, and I get their permission. And then I give them a rough couple of lines of what I want to go for, and I will not make a video unless I get full approval beforehand. Because That's I'm awesome. not here to That's upset awesome. anyone. You know, yeah, I'm not absolutely. here to. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm. It's all for fun. You know, my channel is strictly for fun. I'm not here to upset anyone. Um, so thankfully, everyone's been a really great sport and they've all given me permission beforehand, um, which is excellent. With regards to how I get the ideas, I mean, I don't really know. I mean, I, I, I keep a notepad document. I mean, I should really use a word, Microsoft Word, but I've got a notepad document and I just fill it with ideas. And every time I come up with something, I will like Facebook message my wife what my idea was. And she's like, no idea what I'm talking about. And when I get <laughs> home, I chuck it into that notepad document and I've got a list of ideas just ready to go. See, that, the, the key with those ideas is, uh, in my experience, you've got you've to keep them detailed because I used to do bad low-level stand-up comedy and I'd wake up and I'd see a note that said something like Keystone Ice Food Bank, but I didn't know what that <laughs> meant. Yeah. I just, you know, it, it sounds like it had legs, but I, I had nothing. I had no additional detail. So I yeah. guess don't drink when you're brainstorming is my point, kids. <laughs> well, I will give you a little um, sort of a, not, not necessarily a leak, but a sort of a tease. I have permission from another big Earth 2 YouTuber to make a video on them. Ah. And that person is Earth 2 Meta. Ah, that's our good our good buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I've I've been around at some good points, good times, where he's taken his camera off his webcam off of his monitor and showed us the rest of the room. So I actually know a bit more about the guy than most people. So I should be able to give him some nice little friendly jabs about things people don't know about. Awesome. Looking forward to that because. Yeah, Meta so is one of the hardest working YouTubers out there. His 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 content's just so impressive as far as how yeah, he puts it together. Fantastic stuff. It really is. I got a lot of a lot of time for the bloke. A lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of source material is great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we told him you were coming on the night. He's like, is he going to use his robot voice? <laughs> <laughs> Very excited. Yeah, that is the question. Well, I, yeah, I mean, a... I did want to talk to you a little bit. I mean, you're, you're, I think, most famous for being a content creator and also your presence in the, you know, Earth 2 IO 
Discord and your use of the the Kirby emojis, I think, also yeah, separate yeah. you from from everyone. But well, but we let's are. Not, let's not forget the most important part. What's that? The quickness. That is the. Hey. <laughs> The, the speed of application is key. I will, I will quickly jump in here, actually. And now I, I, I am sort of, I wouldn't say struggling, but I'm concerned at the amount of use of these signature phrases that I can use. For example, the quickness and then saying um, hundreds, maybe even billions, like, like the catchy lines that everyone gets. I really am trying not to use them too much because they'll lose all their like backbone, you know. Right, their specialness. Yeah, so I'm trying to switch it up. Like you, you've you've obviously heard the quickness, but I, I've I've thrown in a couple times the swiftness. Oh, so smooth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to switch it up a little bit, you know. It's like it's like you know I love soon, but I'm I'm getting tired of soon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can't use it too much. It just kind of wears out. Well, yeah, I mean, you're you're well positioned, I think, Mitch, to potentially sell some merchandise. But yeah, you gotta you gotta keep things fresh. You gotta come up with new new catchphrases. Yeah. So I understand. Yeah. You gotta well, reinvent my, yourself uh, as an artist. That's what my notepad files for. <laughs> <laughs> I've got loads of ideas written down in here. Well, beyond your your content creation, do you want to share a little bit about you know your own strategy within the game? Do you have any um, you know do you have specific types of properties you target? Do you have any involvement with guilds and mega cities? You know, just kind of spill the beans on what you're up to within Earth Two. Okay. Um, yeah. No. No problem. So, from where I'm sitting right now, um, I, I'm I think it's pretty clear. Uh, maybe it has been. Confirmed. I, I'm. I'm. I'm not sure. I'm pretty. I think it's pretty clear that essence will give you a set amount per tile, regardless of the class. Um, mm. I, I don't know. I don't know if we know that, but that is what I assume. However, I'm thinking more long term, more long game. So I'm, my current plan is to ship off and sell my class threes and most of my class twos, because there's there's some great deals on class ones at the moment. Like there's oh, not a lot yeah. of action, and there's some brilliant class ones. And I'm just thinking, okay, the essence is great, and I think the essence is going to make if it comes out like I think it will. The essence has a chance to make class ones even cheaper. So I'm just going to load up, and when resources come out, that's what I'm looking for. So I'm sort of trying to play. Not the super long game, but like quite a long play. And I think I think trying to stockpile the class ones is a very good move. But while I also say that, uh, back in December, I did also pick up a few landmarks, and I'm not selling those. Those, those class threes can just stay, and I'll just I'll just let them sit, and they they will be the very long play. So that's my uh, strategy at the moment: sell the class twos and threes, and move into the class ones while they're cheap. Yeah, and I th the the class threes, you know, even if you did want to move on from like those landmarks, I do think it's it's tough right now to move class twos and threes. So it, oh, e it even is, if yeah. you did want to move the landmarks, I think it might make sense, you know, at least at this snapshot in time to to hold on to those and maybe let the market improve a bit mm. for the non class ones. Well, it's interesting because as we sit right now, I don't know if you guys are using the. Um premium sniper market thing or if you're aware of it yeah uh, we're, we're, we're definitely aware of it yeah we're aware okay. of it i don't pay for the the premium one i have used the dot market you free site don't before. need to pay for premium anymore i think they oh, made it oh right right yes yeah the premiums have been released to free um but you'll be surprised like a lot of class twos are actually going for very similar value um as as the c1s obviously anyone can put a price on something but there's for example, class two tiles, let's say they're on the marketplace for 40 cents a tile. They're only worth that if somebody does buy it for 40 cents a tile. For example, I'm trying to sell um, a 700, and, I'm not trying to plug it here, but I'm trying to sell a 750 plot in um, UAE, class two, and it's the second cheapest on the marketplace, and I, I can't get rid of it. I've had it for about a week on there for sale, and no one's interested. Oh. So it's quite, quite difficult. I, so if you go to the premium sniper marketplace right now and you sort the 
class one by high, highest discount to lowest discount. Mm-hmm. The one that shows up at the top, the minus 75% Italy. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, no. I, what I do is I, uh, not to oh, give away I'm, all I'm, my, I'm all my tricks. Say, I'm just going to say that minus 75% Italy. That's mine. Yeah, fair one enough. Of those, one what, of those illiquid. <laughs> hard to liquidate right now. Sorry, like, sorry. What I'm, that's right. What I'm doing at the moment is, is I would go on that website. I would search for class ones and then I would go by um, lowest dollar per tile or, or, you know what I mean, cost per tile and ah. just see what's around. But I, I'm very strict in making sure the tiles are connected and they're squared or they're following a coastline quite nicely. I'm, I've, I'm very particular about the layout of the tiles. And I think in the future, it's very important for value to have a good layout of your tiles. Yeah, I think so too, because if you're going to build on it, I think having a good symmetry is going to be important. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And we've already mm. seen the on the marketplace, just as it stands, I know we don't have the game to bounce these ideas off of yet, but it's harder to liquidate a bizarrely shaped plot. So if you buy something yeah. and you you know down the road you do want to sell it, you're at least in better hands if it's, you know, square and and one parcel to begin with. But absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, your your strategy sounds, I think, pretty similar to some of the things that you know Hazy and I have talked about for sure. Definitely the hoarding of C ones. I mean, there have been times that, oh, for one reason or another, we we move on from those. But I think that that's been a core uh, strategy for both of us too. So hopefully, yeah. I mean, hopefully it works out for all three of us. Yeah. Whenever yeah, just, whenever yeah. I'm on the marketplace, the first place I always look is C one, and then if I don't find anything that catches my eyes, I'll see if I can find something really cheap. That's C2 or C3, but definitely focus on C1. Right, right. Well, uh, yeah, we, we, the three of us got to talk about this a tiny bit uh, beforehand, and it's been all the talk in the Discord this week. Um, but I do want to transition into this acquisition announcement that Shane had made. Um, and I'll read the tweet first, uh, which Shane said, have been quietly working away on a seven-figure tech acquisition. Very excited how things are progressing there. Will be great for Earth 2 and all parties involved. Other news coming through the pipeline. Hashtag E2, hashtag Earth 2, hashtag Shoon. So on that note of this potential acquisition, um, Mitch, I'll start with you. Do you have any idea what kind of company Earth 2 would you know, be interested in acquiring and... Uh, you know, I think that for this topic, I encourage you to, you know, speculate like an absolute maniac. Uh, interestingly, unlike my friend, Randy, <laughs> <laughs> I am not really a speculator. Uh, I kind of take things as face value and wait for things to be announced. But I would like to bring you just back a week or so to a tweet on April 17th. Um, from Shane, which uh, talks about the essence being delayed due to a massive opportunity. You may all be disappointed now, but I can guarantee that. And then it goes on and on. Now, people were looking at the capital letters for that, and they were convinced that it was GoChain and essence um, crypto related. Uh, I, after hearing Shane's latest tweet, those two in my mind are connected. But I feel like seven figures is not is not enough to be crypto. I I don't I'm not sure. I just so, don't think that adds up to me. So there was a really interesting theory in off topic on the Earth Two official chat today mm -hmm. that it's VR chat, and their their value is around ten million. So it's, okay, that's kind of to me that was actually one that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly plausible. And anytime somebody gives, you know, the figure amount, it's obviously broad. That could be between 1 million and 10 million. So you know, it's hard to <laughs> kind of pin down what that could truly mean. But I do agree with you, Mitch, that it seems, uh, you know, like a low number to acquire, you know, a, a something that's like a, a blockchain startup or uh, some of the yeah. fintech companies, yeah. you know, like that you could speculate on. Yeah, I don't think it's a blockchain startup, but perhaps it's related to the GoChain thing. Like maybe mm -hmm. a, maybe like a a part of the technology that's needed to do the blockchain integration. I don't know. Uh, I like the VR chat ideal. That makes sense for what Earth 2 wants to do. But like 
every week we say this, we're just speculating. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think ultimately we can agree that, yeah, in the world of company acquisitions, it's not a huge number, but I'm excited to see what it is. And I do think it's going to be something different from go chain in some way. I think it'll be a, you know, it's, I don't think it's directly related to that relationship, but, mm. but who knows? I mean, Shane loves to keep us mostly in the dark. Yeah. But I, I mean, I was hoping he was acquiring uh, like Pornhub or, or something like that, but <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think they're probably worth a bit more than the seven figures. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, they, can, they can just, just, acquire... just stay in. Just acquire, just acquire Mia Khalifa and, and yeah, play, that, play, place her next to the Burj Khalifa, then we're good. That might, yeah. You, can you buy individual categories? That might be what seven figures nets you. But, <laughs> but I mean, the reason we're talking about these vague acquisition announcements, uh, you know, as exciting as they are, is also because you know there hasn't been there haven't been any earth shattering announcements this week, right? There's been mostly things that we know are happening soon, but it's sort of been you know, dull, quiet progress. Um, it seems yeah. like withdrawals are moving better. I've at least noticed that. Have you, you know, I'll, I'll kick it to you, Hazy. Have you noticed anything, you know, this week as far as progress, you know, things seemingly looking better from, from the Earth 2 end, at least for customer support? I mean, honestly, the big news this week has come from our end. I mean, the Republic interview is probably the biggest thing that happened this week. I think you could toot our own horn to that degree. I think that's probably fair. Um, but as far, I mean, I have seen more, less complaining, I would say. I don't see uh, the constant withdrawal spam. You still see it, but I mean, it's not nearly every 30, 30 minutes you're seeing someone come in, where's my money? So on that regard, it's better. Uh, I did actually get a response to my three-week-old support ticket. So there was that, even though they told me no, which I expected. <laughs> uh, um, but i mean yeah I, I think so but i just think the lack of communication is it just bothers me well i will say that i think that you know it the little crumbs that get left out go a long way which i, I think is sort of the origin story of how you get something like shun but people criticize it but it does seem to string the community along <laughs> long enough to you know prevent things from getting ugly or people from getting sort of uncomfortable with such a nascent investment. Yeah. But yeah, I, I will, I, I think another thing that I've at least noticed is it does seem like there's fewer frozen properties and frozen accounts floating around. Uh, like Hazy, you and I have joked about the annoying class one Argentina plot that's been on the market forever, but you know, compared to some of the waves of frozen properties and frozen accounts that we've seen in the past, it's actually a pretty clean marketplace right now. Yeah. When I try to buy stuff, it goes through, which sounds simple, but <laughs> sometimes it hasn't been quite so easy. Mm. So, you know, that's, again, not a whole lot to talk about here, but I suppose... You what, what, what's your view, Mitch, on what, what you've been seeing? Uh, well, I mean, the most exciting thing that's happened... Is uh, we got some some new mods. Yeah, ah. I mean <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Nothing's happened. Yes, and I we do think that's mods. positive. Yeah, <laughs> they seem to be doing a good job so far. Yeah, but again, I think that's a testament to you know a slow news week, and hopefully, it's the quiet before the storm of you know maybe yeah. some partnership announcements or this acquisition announcement. I feel I, like we're I, all waiting for something big. I mean, the news is so slow. We had to bring Mitch Pym on. Come on, it's... <laughs> you got uh, Earth Two fake news in. I've talked to them. We might have them on someday. That would be when we absolutely <laughs> have nothing to talk about. Yeah, yeah. I also fear that if we bring two people on, we'll completely lose what little control of the podcast we have, and it'll become the Earth Two fake news podcast for yeah, at least that episode. <laughs> especially with those two. Yes, precisely. <laughs> Well, one thing, uh, I'll, I'll transition it to the next topic. We talked a little bit about this, and it, it's probably early to speculate on something like this, but people in the Discord have been talking about the idea of, I'll describe it as a post-launch nation split. And the reason I describe it that way is we saw a pre-launch nation split with the United Arab Emirates, where the nation was separated into its individual emirates, and so the prices weren't tethered to one another. 
Um, and so with some of the, the larger nations and, and really expensive nations, like say the United States um, or the United Kingdom, potentially trying on a moving forward basis to you know split up those nations in a similar way. Um, Mitch, do you, I know that you had asked a question actually earlier this week, uh, you know, is this something that you would like to see? And if so, how would that even look? Um, yeah, I did. I, I asked Shane, uh, he was in the chat probably two or three days ago. Um, and I asked him about splitting up the UK into Wales, Scotland, England, and Northern, Northern Ireland. Um, and he said, not at this stage. So he's obviously not against it, but he's not saying that he's willing to do it like right now. Um, <clears throat> and I have actually been thinking about how this would be done. I don't know if you two have been thinking about it either, but I think the only way they could do it, um, and not everyone's going to be happy with this, is, so let's say, what, what's, uh, sorry, what's USA at the moment? 56, Price 56, 57. 56, okay, we'll take that. Um, I think that they would have to split it into every single state but they all have to stay at 56, and then from there on, they will go up independently. Uh, yeah, that wouldn't I work. I don't know how. If they, if they split, otherwise they're going to take the value down, and people who, are, who bought at 56 are going to be out of pocket. So here, here's my idea for that, uh, just spitballing like I always like to do. Have, mm -hmm. uh, have USA split into two sections, ma major, metropolitan, and rural and basically anything that's already uh claimed goes into the major and anything else would be a new new area called uh not major basically basically i don't know how you would classify but basically you just have a new classification for cl property that is not claimed in the united states currently mm. well i uh, yeah that is one way you could do something like that i i think another way just thinking forward to like once we get and i don't know that we'd get there naturally but to the class five or to the sort of post base tiles if you were able to say you know up to this date everything's on the conventional pricing model and then as of i don't know june 1st we're we're transitioning into you know a post base tile world for the united states and then from there you'd be able to you know, sort of set a new economy accordingly because you'd be operating in a whole new class and sort of be like a second, I don't know, version of the country. Yeah. But that's a that's a lot to consider, obviously. Well, it, it, they either have to do something or they're going to end up not selling any more USA tiles in a, in a year. Right. I mean, it is really strange for me to look at cities that are quite large, like these major top 20 population in the United States type cities and their downtown areas are desolate because so much of those early purchases happened in Manhattan New and in DC and Los a few Angeles, other Los Angeles, Seattle. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So you see, you know, like these skyscrapers that in a smaller nation would presumably be owned just from at least like a central city foot traffic perspective, but because it's such a large nation, you know, and I'm sure the same can be said about, large cities in, you know, China, Russia, these very expensive places where you just have cities that basically don't have any own tiles. It's become too expensive. So, I, you know, because I would like to be able to buy in some places that are not as uh, high foot traffic in the United States, but um, like, for instance, the college I went to is in a city that's a bit smaller, but I would never drop that kind of coin <laughs> now that it's $56 a tile. But if you brought it back down to like ten dollars a tile, and I could own some sort of like class six, you know, crappy version, I don't know. Maybe that would get my attention. But yeah, fifty-five dollars ain't doing it. <laughs> but I mean, I I do. It does sound like that's something that's you know, a ways out. So yeah, if they let us merge and split properties, I think that'll be a good. Thing too because when you have those weird parcels that you buy where you have four tiles here and three tiles there being able to split them then sell them separately would be really helpful for those really crappy properties that people have made well thinking about like the you know the italy property you have too it's not necessarily a crappy property but it's just so expensive so big right yeah that if you could at least bring the net 
you know, estimated value down, you'd be able to move it a little easier. Yeah, if I could make them uh, 21 10 tile plots instead of a single 200 10 tile plot, it'd be a lot easier to move. Exactly. Yeah, that'll be exciting to see. You know, I don't know necessarily how splitting a property will work with the potential for blockchain. You know, I think that that somebody that knows a lot more about blockchain would be able to tell me the potential ramifications of that. But um, I do think that from a marketplace perspective, it would go a long, long way. Because I don't know, just thinking of multi-hundred tile plots in these nations, there's only so many people that can afford them. But I've talked about that a whole lot. And, you know, I think that that's old news. So I'm going to start talking a little bit louder, getting excited, because we did have something very exciting happen this this week with uh, Republic, our friends at Republic. So, Hazy, do you want to talk to us a little bit about what's been going on with Republic Real Estate? Yeah, so, I mean, we talked to them on Tuesday. Uh, it was a great, great podcast. Uh, it soon will be our top listen podcast. I, I think they're only five behind the one we had with Meta, uh, Speak of the Devil. And so it, it'll probably get to a, a hundred listens sometime next week. And uh, <laughs> Woo! I know for us, that's huge. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, normally we get between 40 to 50. So when we, when we approach uh, triple digits, we're, 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 we're big time. Oh yeah. I'm shotgunning a beer as soon as we get off this podcast. Celebrate. Yeah. But in, anyway, uh, so Janine Yorio, the head of the Republic uh, real estate fund, I reached out to her after the show, just thanking her for, sending Jawad on the show and told her that was a really good interview and that we enjoyed it. And she wrote back to me, uh, we're interested in investing in or two. Can you put me in contact with the team? I was like, Whoa, they didn't hesitate. They, we, I mean, we basically sold them on the viability of or two as a viable investment for a real, a virtual real estate fund. But of course the problem with that is, Trying to get a hold of someone on the Earth 2 team is like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Uh, I reached out to Shane via DM. I reached out to Nathaniel via DM. I reached out to Thomas via DM. I tweeted at Shane. Uh, no luck for 24 hours. So I'm like, all right. Oh, I actually reached out to a moderator too. I'm like, hey, can you uh, reach out to Thomas and see if uh, he can look into this? And that was actually the avenue that ended up working. Uh, the, <laughs> the, moder- the moderator said, I got in touch with Thomas. Here's his email address. You can connect the two. And that's what I ended up doing. But that was 24 hours after the fact. So hopefully they're, they're figuring things out. But, I mean, the potential for this is, is pretty huge because they can put seven figures into or two pretty easily. And I get questions when I posted this why do they need to talk to the team? And I think people don't understand that this isn't a solo investor. They are representing people. They're representing 40 to 50 people putting in 100 to $200,000. And they need to understand how Earth 2 works, what its fundamentals are, what its principles are, and you know, kind of what they're planning on doing in the future before they make that kind of investment on behalf of their clients. Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, I think that we see a lot of people, it's not as common as it was, but folks express some skepticism, right? And we joke about Shane, you know, fleeing with our money. But the fact is to have somebody uh, legitimate and professional, you know, want to invest a sizable amount of money, they're going to want to vet your operations, right? They're not just going to throw, to your point, they're not going to throw other people's money into that. So actually, these types of interactions and them wanting to talk to you know Shane and everybody it, it's a positive thing because every time somebody partners with or decides to invest it's sort of like a vote of confidence as far as I'm concerned so and I do think based on us talking to Jawad that they're very understanding that this is not going to happen overnight you know I don't think that they're the type of investors that are expecting to you know get a hundred percent return next month or something obnoxious like that so well, I think that it'll go hopefully a long way to, you know, moving some marketplace properties around and, you know, it's another major player. So, you know, yeah. We- so, so, I mean, you and I, you and I, Kenya, we talk about this stuff all the time. So like, we're really in tune to kind of like the business side of thing, but I wonder for someone like you, Mitch, who kind of is serious about our two, but doesn't go really in depth like we do. When you see this kind of news, what does that mean to you? Uh, what does it mean to me? Yeah. 
it like, means is this exciting? Me, <laughs> it's exciting. Um, I just hope that they use your referral code for getting them in touch <laughs> and being the middleman. You know, yeah. surely you should get some commission, you know, a little kickback for this. Yeah, you know, that would be nice. But on, <laughs> honestly, if, if it's just good for the future of Earth 2, then I don't really care. I just And that was my whole motivation for for wanting to make sure they got in touch with the Earth 2 team. It's, I don't care if I benefit from this. I just want Earth 2 as a whole to benefit from it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think that it's, you know, for me, it was really exciting before we even, you know, before hazy you reached out to even try to interview anybody with them just seeing janine yorio on cnbc talking about this stuff in a way that was real you know i think that the host interviewing her expressed some skepticism and disbelief at the premise but that's to be expected right with the idea of virtual real estate so to have people that you can talk to that are well researched and also truly believe in at least the possibility of the space it's not blind commitment to any metaverse that springs up but knowing that this you know the ones that do it right will succeed and that there will be a good product yeah so let's talk about the positives of this and there is potential negatives so the positive is it's bringing money into the game it stimulates the marketplace P uh people buy pro and if the place like republic comes in and spends a million dollars that's going to bring more people in spending money. So it's going to stimulate the economy over the long term. The negatives, I think, are maybe uh, it stimulates it too quickly. I mean, it absolutely could happen. And I do think that if there's a large influx of money that happens at once, not that there hasn't already been a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but every time there's additional publicity, that's a higher and higher likelihood that there's going to be some regulatory attention in this space. So uh, I think, you know, we've talked about it in the past. It's, it's only going to take, you know, one bad story of somebody blowing their college tuition on a poor purchase to potentially get some negative PR and generate, you know, some churn in like Washington, DC. Um, I'm not saying that's going to happen. And I'm not saying that the coverage on that would even be fair it's just the optics of it, right? And the ability for somebody to run with a negative story like that. And that can be all it takes to generate some of that regulatory feedback. So that is one thing that Jawad touched on that, you know, I think we also need to be aware of from, I mean, cause that'll, that will affect many different components of earth too. It'll go beyond just, oh, do I have to pay taxes on this? You know, it could affect the fundamental way that tiles are purchased in theory yeah and, and implementing the blockchain is also going to complicate that a little bit too i think yeah absolutely i mean yeah there's a, a lot of moving parts here and i think the longer that we can <laughs> avoid that sort of attention the better yeah. what, what's your biggest concern about the future of our two met i mean like what kind of things are you kind of watching from the side being like that kind of scares me or worries me um, not much, to be honest. I'm pretty optimistic. Yeah, so are we. But we always have to talk about <laughs> we we always have to question the negative things just because that's what we do. We, we have to demonstrate some objectivity as well. We can't just. But yeah, <laughs> we're, de we're we are definitely Earth Two fanboys. So don't don't get it wrong. Even though we bring up uh, critical points, it's because we care and we we want to make sure those points get addressed. Yeah, it's Im it's important to be critical. You but know. I think it's good to have, you know, it's good to hear that Mitch is optimistic. So Mitch is a smart guy. If Mitch is optimistic. I'll, I'll take that. I'll head into the weekend with that. <laughs> I, I just want to, I just want to make a Minecraft video about Shane sleeping. That's <laughs> hey, that's not. You, let me put that on my notepad. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> There's at least potential for a joke or two there. Oh, easy jokes. Easy oh yeah, jokes. easy jokes. <laughs> How have I missed well, that? That's like obvious. That's... <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Mitch, we don't want to take up too much of your time. We know that you're a ways out and uh, it's getting a little bit late where you live. So I'm going to start heading down the home stretch here. But there's one project before we sign off, Hazy, that I got to ask you about. You mentioned to me that you've got a plan to potentially crack into the top 50 leaderboards. And I, I got to hear what this, first of all, where did this plan come from? So just through the natural course of flipping, I've slowly been moving up my, the highest net worth 
Uh, so, I mean, it, and we talked about this with, um, with my store on, on Monday. Uh, it's kind of a convoluted way they do it. Uh, it's basically, it's not how much money you've actually put into the game. It's how much money you've invested in land. So when I sell a property for $500 and then I put that $500 back in the game, even though I didn't actually invest $500, that $500 gets added onto my highest net worth. So just naturally through, and I'm, I haven't been a serious flipper. I just do it for fun here and there. I'd gotten up to 30,000. I'm like, huh, I'm only 20,000 away from the top 50. Let me, uh, let me have some fun. So I lowered everything, just basically bare bones prices. And in the course of a week, I'm up to 34,608. So oh. if I can, if I can do 4,000 a week, I can be top, top 50 by the end of June. Cause top so, 50 right now is like just a bit above 50,000, right? It's like 52 or something like that is like the entry point. I think 50, I'm going to look it up right now. Of course, my 51. computer. 51. Okay. So you're two thirds of the way there. And yeah, if you're doing four a week, you know, you'd be, if everything stayed static, you'd be there, you know, when five weeks basically, but yeah, certainly, I, you know, I it mean, depends it, on what the leaderboard does in the meantime too. It, it's definitely a sacrifice on my, like my percent gain has gone down dramatically. Um, but of course that was also a factor of buying Vatican and Monaco tiles. Uh, and I'm, I'm definitely taking a loss on profit that normally I was marking things up between 20 to 50%. Now I'm marking it up for $10. <laughs> right. Right. Sometimes making just two, 3% on something. Yeah. But it's just basically, as long as I have tiles in the game, I'm, I, I, the ones I really like, I keep. Exactly. Exactly. Or I mark up a ridiculous price that no one will ever pay. Well, and as it stands, I mean, you know, you could sell something that ends up profiting or excuse me, increasing in value at a higher rate than what you bought with those funds. But at the end of the day, if you're selling everything you buy for a profit, you can't lose, right? Even if it's a dollar here, two dollars there. Yeah. Ultimate, it's all yeah, ultimate, rolling forward. Yeah. Ultimately, it's rolling forward. And as long as I keep the money in the game and don't cash it out, then I have that value in my Earth 2 account. Exactly. I, I think that this, you know, we don't have a lot of recurring segments, but uh, I think Hazy's top 50. I think that this is something that we need to do every yeah, week, at least once a week to see, you know, what are your successes? What were your big moves? And I, uh, I, how I, far I, up are you? <laughs> I, I still want to do the hundred dollar challenge too. We'll have to talk about that next week. Yeah. Well, I've got that. I've got the email address set up for this other account now. So okay. I think I can, I, I think I'm about ready to do this. Yeah. We're about the multi-account mids. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Our nine consistent listeners are now aware that we're, that we're doing this, but I don't know. Is that, a, is that actually a violation of TOS? I thought we were okay to do that. No, because I mean, if, if it is, then like pretty much every mega city's violating the TOS. Yeah, everyone that's ever made tile art that required more than one yeah. flag color. They, yeah. they, would, they, <laughs> they would actually have to come out with an actual statement and say, okay, you have two weeks to get rid of your other accounts. That's... <laughs> or, yeah. or, to, or to merge them with your existing... They would have to do something publicly... I think as far as they're concerned, they're getting money from me one way or the other. Yeah, I think it'll be exactly, okay. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. All right. Long, well, I, as yeah. Long, yeah, as long as you're not doing anything nefarious, I think it's fine. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Which the only nefarious thing I'm going to do is lose to Hazy in this competition. But I think that that's totally <laughs> legal. My incompetence is not a violation of any service. Well, I, but, I know I know Mitch mainly. It was me and Kangy doing all the talking Uh because we tend to, that's what we do. We talk a lot. No, that's right. It's, it's nice to listen, to be honest. Well, I mean, it's, I, I, it was great to talk to you about your experiences with content creation. You know, you're a lot more experienced with this stuff than I think, uh, <laughs> than certainly I am. So you know, we could learn a thing or two from, from, you know, your past successes. And I definitely would like to have you on the show in the future as you roast a few more, uh, members of our little earth two community here yeah we're looking forward absolutely to, looking forward to the meta video so yeah. <laughs> yeah, very yeah. much so <laughs> one, one thing that you guys uh you do definitely need to do and I, i'm pretty sure i've seen you say about it before so you are aware um you need to get on youtube yes uh, i'm actually it. it's my job this weekend so hazy oh, 
Yes, yes. It's we've, something we've, that we've... Yeah, we've actually talked about this, so... Yeah, so hopefully, uh, actually, by the end of the weekend, we'll have that sort of the ball truly rolling on that and have some videos up. Um, oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. But but and that by, advice is duly noted, Mitch. You're totally right. And by videos, we mean us talking with something running in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure something out. Well, Our, on that note, I mean, is there anything else, Hazy? Are, are we uh, are we heading into the weekend here? We're we're about to go crack crack one open, like you said. Exactly. Yeah, I'm going straight <laughs> stone cold in my backyard, scaring the dogs, riling up the neighbors. And I'm Mitch very is, enthusiastic. I'm going and, straight to bed. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say Mitch is going to bed. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> All right, Mitch. Well, we appreciate having you on. Uh, this was the My Name Is Human Earth Two Dot IO podcast, brought to you by Earth Two News. And until next time. Get up off your knees, girl Get up Stand face to face with your girl Oh, God And find out what you are Hello, my name is Human Hello, my name is Human And I came to